Hey, gorgeous. Are you ready to turn the light switch of your soul on and live an authentic, radiant and unapologetically pleasure-filled life? I'm Penny Vandersloos. I empower women like you in your midlife who are struggling to love your body and prioritize pleasure, play and passion and invite you to discover your powerful, untapped, sensual, sexual and feminine energy so you can feel confident, free and in love with your body and life. So I'm a pleasure activist and adventurer, feminine empowerment coach and conscious creative and connector. I'm a wife and mother of two teens and host of this podcast, Turned On, Wild, Free and Sexy in Your Midlife. So now you're here, I invite you to come on a journey with me where you'll be curious, listen with an open heart and mind without judgment and comparison and feel safe to explore the aspects of our lives that are taboo, surrounded in shame and limit our access to pleasure and joy. And today I'm really excited to share this episode with you about body love and acceptance with Liz. So Liz Reichard is a friend. <laughs> she lives in the Macedon Ranges, which are just north of Melbourne in Victoria. And she's founded Sun Ranges Koya, which we'll talk a lot about. But that was um, in 2021 after she had a breakdown. Um, whilst working as a lawyer, um, working with women predominantly experiencing family violence. And Liz has found her true call calling with Koya. It's a dance-based embodiment class for women, regardless of gender assigned at birth, and that supports you to feel rather than think. So Koya, Koya has completely changed her life from her career to her feelings about her body, to realizing what she can do, acknowledging what she has already done and using it as a tool to help other women to do the same. It's also helped her to find new ways to continue to explore pleasure in midlife and beyond. So perfect that you're here with me today, Liz. Thank you. Hey, well, Penny. Thanks. It's lovely to be here. So Liz and I actually met at a Koya class. We were both participants at a Koya class. I don't know, it must have been about four years ago now. But yeah, we've probably. our our paths have crossed in many ways, um, not only dancing, but definitely in this space of empowering women, encouraging women to express themselves fully. And so I'm really excited to, yeah, get your insights and perspectives on how do women live a turned on life in midlife? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Tell me a bit about um, what do you see as turned on and what turns you on? What's turned on? Turned on is, well, I think it needs, first we need to say that turned on doesn't mean down to fuck or down to have sex all the time. Yeah. Like we're not talking about that kind of turned on turned on is more like the light inside you is turned on and she's she's lit and she's not just this little teeny weeny flame but she's this big flame that fills you and that you can feel the warmth and the light is coming out of you because your flame is on and you know you are wonderful and that's that's what we're talking about what i talk about when i talk about turned on and it's about knowing so Trusting yourself, trusting your own intuition, trusting your body, uh, appreciating your body for what it does for you, not just what it looks like. Your body is not an ornament. It is a tool for you to be able to navigate through this life and to be able to experience all the beautiful different things that you do. And for me, being turned on is about doing that about bringing pleasure into whatever I'm doing. Like I'm sitting here having this podcast with you. I have got my beautiful fancy little glass for my water. I've got a candle burning. I have made this experience as nice as I can for myself because that way I feel good. And that will come across in the interview, I hope too. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like we can bring these little things into our everyday lives to bring pleasure into it. It doesn't have to be, you know, don't get me wrong, it's wonderful if you can go for a retreat, if you can go and have a massage or a facial. But having your favourite cup of tea and spending 
15 minutes being able to just really enjoy that drink in the nicest cup you've got quietly for yourself is also bringing pleasure into your day and that didn't cost you anything yeah so that totally time giving yourself that time it's totally about living a turned on life not a turn on moment that you earn or you have to wait for <laughs> it's how do we weave pleasure into everyday moments and live and particularly I think where we want to focus is for many of us our midlife is sort of a period where we're told it's going to be difficult and challenging or our body is changing or you know life is coming to uh, towards the end in some cases. You know, it's 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 getting closer than it ever was. And so how do we kind of embrace this part of our life in a way that feels really empowering and exciting? The thing is, what you're saying there about what we're told, and, and I agree with you, that's absolutely what we're told. And if you look in the, in the media and, and, you know, all these multi-billion dollar industries that make money for making us feel insecure about ourselves mm. and about our aging because you know heaven forbid you get a wrinkle or your hair goes gray you know <laughs> you know forget it yeah. you're, you're on the way out that said what I'm noticing is that the women who are in my sort of age group and and older already are going oh no oh no 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 this is my time this is the time where I get to shine, where I get to finally go, hang on, what is it that I want and where am I going? So the kids are getting older or they may have already grown up. Um, they might be leaving or they might not. And then you're sitting here going, okay, so the kids are gone. So that's taken a massive chunk of my life away and we, you know where I was devoting time. What do I do with that time? Ooh, 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 okay, let's, let's find something for me. Let's do something for myself. And they, what I find is that women are sort of going, right, now I focus on everyone else, now it's my time. Mm -hmm. And they're coming into this space and they're coming into their midlife going, all right, I'm hungry for something for myself. I'm hungry for something different. I'm hungry to do something that's not revolving around someone else for the change. Mm -hmm. And this is why the spaces that you create and the spaces that I create are so important and we're, what I'm finding women are looking for. They're looking for spaces with women where they can gather, where they can be there without shame, without judgment. They can just show up as they are and be held in that and have that community, which many of them have been lacking because they've been too busy with dropping the kids at school, going to work, coming back from work, picking the kids up from school, taking them to soccer, going making dinner and then flopping into bed going, ah, and now I have to do it all again tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, I see it all the time. We put all our attention on everyone else and pleasing everyone else and then get to this point of our life when either yeah, the children have changed, the role that you lead with them is different, they're no longer dependent on you in the same way. And so you either wonder, well, what about me? I don't know what pleases me anymore. I've forgotten I've lost myself. So there's that that can come up at this time of our life. Or actually the life we set up maybe isn't satisfying us in the way we thought it would. So you know, yeah. marriage is a bit blah or, you know, it has yeah. become a bit ho-hum or the job that you thought was going to be ideal and be what you'd want to do for the rest of your life doesn't fulfill you in the same way anymore or maybe you're in a job you never liked it and now like shivers do I have to keep this up so there's all these things that I think come yeah. to a head in this point of our life and I mean maybe too Liz what's what do you see as midlife like how do you you know and the women that you're working with what does you know midlife involve for them and what ages does it kind of cover well I think Thinking about it logically for a moment, I think they're saying the life expectancy for women is around 85. Is that still about right? I think so, so, yeah. So we're looking sort of, you know, 40s to 50s is probably where we're going with midlife. And and it's an interesting thing because I think midlife shows up very, you know, midlife sort of crisis or, you know, awakenings or, or musings show up very differently for men and women. So women are more like, okay, 
So I've hit this age. Who am I? What am I doing? And sort of reevaluating what's going on. And for men, it's changed. <laughs> I need someone young and seeing I need to feel young again. And if they don't feel young again, you know, it's all feeling a bit, they, they've lost their youth because they're at a certain age and they're trying to reclaim that. Whereas I don't think for women is the same sort of thing. I think we're much more about embracing the age we're at and going, okay, so I've done all these things. I've experienced this stuff, but what do I want to experience now? Where do I want to go now with this? I don't, it's, I, so, well, and this is what I've sort of noticed what I'm experiencing. It's less about, oh, I want to be back in my 20s and go partying. It's more about, or, you know, picking up a young bloke or all those kind of things. It's more about who am I? What does this mean for me? And where do I want to go now forward? Mm -hmm. So uh, is that what you're experiencing too? Yes. And also a bit of sometimes feeling um, lost a bit, I guess, and, mm -hmm. and yeah. not, not sure about maybe I've missed something, <laughs> maybe yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe there's something I didn't experience in my youth that is still youthful, you know, the playfulness, the fun, the, yeah. the joy that I did experience I want to have back, which is where I'm sort of coming with the wild, free and sexy, is like you can feel sexy in this part of your life. It wasn't something that's only available to a teen or a young yeah. woman free yeah. babies and all that sort of stuff so yeah, no. it's definitely so I guess with you and your embodiment work can you talk to us a little bit about you know what attracted you to that and what it's offered to you so you know in the intro I talked to it a little bit but also touching on what is Koya what is this okay so let's let's start with what is Koya so it's a it's a class or a class that was started by an American woman in 2009 I think it was now um, and it it took from all the different modalities that she'd done so she'd done belly dancing she'd done pole dancing she was a yoga teacher she's experienced all these different kinds of dance and, and movement practices and she had a realization that women were having difficulties getting out of their head and back into their bodies and instead of just thinking you know the constant monkey mind chatter of letting that go and coming back into their bodies and feeling into their bodies. So she took from all the things that she had and she created Koya. So it is a dance class with 11 distinct parts. Each part has its own song and its own kind of movement with it. Now, the beauty of it is that there's no level, there's no way to do it wrong, and the way that you know you're doing it right is that it feels good to you. So I'll give directions in the class and say, okay, we're going to, you know, do this, do that. But if that doesn't work for you, the invitation for the entire class is move your body in the way that works for you. So it's... That's great in itself, structure. isn't it? Yes, exactly. And that's the thing. It has structure, but in that structure, there's a lot of freedom. So I, I get the question sometimes, you know, like, is it like five rhythms? Is it like a static dance? Those ones have much, have, don't have the structure. They have structure with the music, the way they play it, whereas mine is far more guided in each of the parts of it. And that works better for some people and not so well for others. So, you know, that's the thing about you finding what's the right thing for you. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea behind Koya is that it's about getting us out of our heads and back into our bodies. So to dance with our emotions, so to feel them in your body and then move with those feelings as a dance partner. So don't think about it, don't choreograph it, just listen to the music, feel the feelings in your body and move with them. And that alone can be very liberating, can be a brand new experience for a lot of women. And it's a thing of, like you said before, the freedom, because so much of what we do and other, you know, like if you go to a traditional dance class, it's all about what it looks like. You know, you've got a mirror in front of you, you've got to step left, you've got to step right, you've got to move your body in the right way. Whereas with this, it is about what feels good? What do I want? What do I want? How do I want to move my body? What does my body need in this moment right now? 
And that's the liberation and the sort of thing of going, right, so this is what it feels like when I'm dancing with, you know, the idea of loving myself. This is what it feels like in my body and this is how I need to move with it. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And it's something that many women haven't done before. And it's another way of sort of what I find with it is, is that it awakens intuition. So if you've been sort of cut off from your intuition or you sort of haven't been listening to it as much, by being back in your body, you start to listen and you start to feel and um, notice your intuition more. And you get those little flutters and you get those little things when something happens and you go, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Or maybe, oh, this is really cool. I'm going to go do that. I don't know why, but I need to go and do that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And and it's interesting when you start to play with that stuff, where you go and what happens for you and what opens up for you. Mm-hmm. So I'm really, um, in my experience too of Koi, I was, as you might be as a listener, never having heard of it, thinking what it <laughs> is, um, curious and trying it out and having exactly that experience of feeling held by the structure. Like I didn't have to work it out or be completely left to my own devices for an hour or two um, but also feeling safe because it, is, it was a container of women and the way it's beautifully set up in the space um, but I think it's a real feminine dance I hadn't had a dance training and if anything had experience of probably negative not getting a dance experience as a young girl thinking well I can't now I'm too it's too late I, I, you know dance is sort of out yeah. of shut for me and I guess what's beautiful about this kind of embodiment dance practice is like you said it's how you feel it's up to you and your body as to what you and how you'll move in the moment and that you're encouraged to do that but through different kind of like you said opportunities in the class through different structures some things resonate more than others but you'll find kind of absolutely yeah find the ones that work for you so mm. yeah and it's it's something too when women have had formal dance training as a young girl or uh, in their youth a lot of women have very have had very bad experiences with that mm. in that there was a lot of um bullying and a lot of um uh, judgment even. The right word. yeah judgment and a lot of thing about you need to look a certain way, you need to have a certain weight, you can't be too tall, you can't be too short, like all these different things about how they perform and how they look. And I know that there's so many women who are traumatised by their dance experience as a young person that they, as much as they love the dance itself, but all the thing around it made it something that they couldn't do anymore. And this is another way to sort of connect back with them, but on their own terms. And in a way that you move the way you want to. And honey, it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter how you're feeling on the day. You come as you are and you will be held. And if you want to cry, cry. If you want to get angry, get angry. Because there's no judgment or shame here. You know? So a beautiful experience and obviously we'll encourage people to try it out if they haven't <laughs> yes. but I guess in the in the the mix I wanted to really unpack like what has it have you seen or what does it allow people to access through this kind of experience you know in terms of loving themselves in a new way yeah. or feeling you know out of you know what is coming out of your head and into your body what does that make available to you what do you well what I've noticed, and it's been really interesting, so with some of the women who I've been working with since I started the business, who have been with me right since the start, um, that they come like we were talking before. They come a little bit lost. They come a little bit unsure. They may have had a major life change, you know, a separation or a, a job forced through or those kind of, you know, big life things, events that can happen. And what I noticed, was that and, and what Koya did for me too it helps you to process what's going on it's a way of 
dealing with the feelings that you've got going on. And by feeling into your body, you start to realize the power and the strength that you have inside of you, that you've always had inside of you, but that you may have forgotten or you may have had taken from you. So especially like with the work that I was doing before with women who were experiencing family violence, when I was dealing with them, I, I had them when it was the acute, like things have just gone to this, you know, they've just left or they're just thinking about leaving or the police have intervened and they've made it in. So you've got these women in this really, really highly stressful situation and it's the worst thing they've ever dealt with in their lives. And so helping them in that point is what I was doing. But what I see now is the way with the Koya, the way I'm helping women now, is once they're through all that and now they're safe, they have a safe place to live, their children are safe, they have an income for themselves, but they still have the lasting effects of what they experienced with their ex-partner. And we know that so many of these women have had their self-confidence so very, very battered and they don't understand or don't remember that how strong and powerful they really are and that even leaving that situation already was a big massive step in the right direction of her taking back her power and going right I'm not putting up with this shit anymore and starting to move into what her next phase of life is going to be and so and what I've noticed what Koya is able to do is able to help women to find that again and I don't I can't explain the science behind it because I don't know but I've seen it I've watched it when you close your eyes and feel into your body what does it feel like when I'm connected to the power within you find it you feel it and you go wow it feels like I don't know. I've had women where you know it feels like their hearts open, feel you know their shoulders are coming back. They feel like there's a golden light coming out of them, or like a light coming through their body. You know all these different feelings that come to them, and then dance with that for one song, and they come out of it and they go, "Whoa, now I got it. Now I remember. Now it's here." And and you know and that's what we do one class at a time. We get them to feel back into their body and to find their power, to find their strength. And it works. It's just, you see it by class, by class, by class. There may be a lot of tears for the start because they're trying to work through this stuff and they don't remember it or it's really emotional, but they're gradually building and building on that muscle until they realize that they're at a point where they know how good they are. They appreciate it. So I'm also realizing that for women who might be feeling stuck in some way, who, you know, have tried various things and they're still not feeling like it's moving or like you've expressed, they've got a trauma or something that they've dealt with that's been quite full on and now what next? Like what's available? Mm. This can be a really beautiful introduction into discovering and remembering the power within them but I also wonder for people who are sort of like I'm not sure I relate to that like that's not my cool. experience what what's available in dance or coming to an embodiment practice like what why would I bother like what how does that help me access that switch that we're, we're cool. talking about that turn on so what what I would say in in relation to all embodiment practices because I mean Koya is not the only one yeah. you have meditation you have yoga you have all these different things that help people get out of their heads and back into their body Tai Chi for instance another one Kridong there's all these different things it doesn't matter what it is find yours because it will help you to feel more grounded it will make you feel karma and it will make you realize and, and this is the thing so many women 
have had so much conditioning about where their value comes from, what, how that their value is based on their looks and how their body looks and all those kind of things. I mean, we can talk about the patriarchy and all the bullshit that we've been put up with since we were tiny little girls and, you know, you're told, smile and, you know, don't cry, don't do this, don't do that, and nice girls don't go and play in the mud. You know, all this kind of conditioning stuff that we've had. And what Korea does and what any embodiment practice does, it starts to undo that. Because you start to go, well, hang on, it doesn't matter what this body looks like. It matters what it feels like. And it matters how I move with it. And it matters not what my thoughts are and what I'm thinking up here. That's not necessarily true. We know this. Mm -hmm. Our minds are set up to have this negative bias. And so as much as we love each, I love ourselves and try to work towards that, this thing up here keeps telling us stuff that's not necessarily true. And by coming back into your body, you start to realize and you start to feel it. And the feeling of it somehow, again, I don't know the science behind it, but it somehow changes what happens up here. <laughs> you know, the feeling. Sometimes of I it think makes... the science is the heady stuff anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Intuitive, like yeah. if you know it and it feels yeah. it, that that's the right, that's the exactly. guide. Yeah, and it, it gets you back in touch with your intuition. Mm. And it gets you back in touch with realizing, okay, what does feel good for me? Do I like this movement? This is something that I've maybe done before, or maybe I've done this movement, but I've only ever done it for someone else's pleasure, not for my own. So there's a there's a part in the choir class which we call the hip opening. And so for one whole song, we're focusing on our hips and moving our hips in different ways. And for so many women, moving their hips in any sort of way, either there's shame associated with it, that they've been told not to do that because, you know, you're sexy and you're going to get yourself into trouble and all that kind of stuff, or they've done these movements for someone else, you know, to turn someone else on, rather than doing it for themselves. And when they start doing it for themselves, they're like, oh, wow, this is different. How do I want to move my body? Mm-hmm. And there's something that just clicks and changes for women when they start to realize that movement doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be for a purpose. It can just be for the hell of it and just because it's fun. Oh, I love that. And it's, I heard like yeah. moving for yourself as well, like that yeah. for no one else. Hey, I really yeah. think this is a beautiful segue into, you know, accepting ourselves and our body and I think a lot of Mm. what you shared to date has been around you know coming into your body but what for those women that don't like their body or are feeling uncomfortable Mm. with the changes that come with Mm. like we we've talked about like your hair color changes your body shape will change your hormones are changing internally all that sort of stuff you know how have you found this sort of embodiment practice to help you accept that your body shape and other women do the same? Well, the thing for me is that we've been told, and let's face it, there are billion-dollar industries Mm. that exist because they have told women that they need to be, their body needs to be a certain size. You know, and you can watch TV. I don't know whether you do or whether your listeners watch TV. I still am old school. I still watch actual TV. (laughs) But, you know, these ads, and I mean, December, January, my God, were they ramping up all the weight loss industry ads, you know? And it's like, wow, okay, right. So, yep. So must be thin, must be usually blonde because otherwise, heaven forbid, must have smooth skin, tight, you know, you know, the, the, the Barbie. We need to be Barbie, basically. And, you know, if your feet stay up permanently so you can wear heels, that'd be even better. Um, and for me, I sort of got to a realisation that um, I didn't even know how, really. It, it, it was conversations with my mum, who's, she's, you know, now in her, nearly in her 80s, and her going, yeah, you know, I don't think I care anymore. And I'm like, 
that's kind of cool. I don't think I want to care anymore either. Can I not wait till I'm her age to not care? Can I do it now? You know what? I think I can. I think I can. And for me, the way I view um, our image and the way we, we view our bodies is that it's, it's a spectrum. And the way I look at it is you have on one side where you have women who look at their bodies and cannot see anything positive. They hate everything about it and that's, you know, they're at the worst thing of how they feel about their body. And on the other side, you have body love, where the ideal, again, we're pushing ideas here, which may or may not be positive for people, and it tends to go towards this nearly toxic positivity, this idea that we love ourselves sick, absolutely sick. Everything that we have, everything we look, what we look like is absolutely perfect and we love it all. Now, for me, the way I look at it is that there's a midpoint. And the midpoint is body neutrality. And body neutrality is where you're able to look at your body in the mirror or see yourself and just see your body as it is. No positive feelings, no negative feelings, just this is my body and this is what it looks like. And for me, that's been where I've always aimed for and what I encourage women to aim for, for that point. Because if you tell someone who, when she looks in the mirror, she can see nothing positive of her body, that what she needs to do is love herself sick, she looks at you and says, fuck off. That's not going to happen. How do I do that? But if you say to her, what if, we get you to, if you try and work to a point where you look at your body and just see it. That's it. This is the size of my body. This is the wrinkle I have. This is the scar I have. You know, whatever the case may be. This is how I am. Now, I'm not saying, and it's up to the, to the individual, of course. You can stay there. And I reckon if you can stay in that spot for most of the, your time, you know, if you can stay in that point for like 80% of the time, I reckon you're doing pretty good and you are doing so much better than so many other women already. But if you want to, you can then try and keep going along and see if you can get towards body love. And even if it's just that you start to like different parts of your body, that you're able to see positive parts in, of your body, you know? It's almost like you're turning on a little piece, like, I was thinking of an analogy of like a light. You don't have to be neon lights, loving yourself in the change room. When yeah. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. if if you turned on a little bit of a nice, oh, I don't know, soft lighting, you can mm-hmm. see that's me. Yeah, I can be myself in this light. I, that feels okay. Yeah. That feels safe for me. And, and you, just picking up on that point about dressing rooms and about buying clothes. It's not your body's fault the clothes don't fit. You can, it's the clothes fault. Like the fashion industry has left out women who are in a lot of lines, even above a size 14. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you've got the whole issue that there's no standard sizing of what a woman's clothes are anyway, where the man can go into a shop and he buys a size 38 pants and it's a size 38 pants and he's done. Women can't do that. We, we need to work out the centimetres and this and that and try it on and work out whether these pants are going to fit us or not. But there's an entire group of women who are left out by the fashion industry. And I, I, I can't remember who said it, and I'm, I'm really sorry that I can't, but I saw one of the women who I follow on Instagram said, can you imagine if shoe companies only went to a size eight and just stopped at a size eight and went, your feet are bigger, too bad. You can't have these shoes. And we're just going to these only, these specific brands will go bigger than a size eight for your shoes. And, and shoes are pretty standard sizes too. You have that as well. So you look at it and go, why is it that the clothing brands think that this is okay, that they 
continue to do this, to, to feed us this bullshit that our body needs to be a particular size to fit in their clothes. No, no, honey. And the thing is, for me, I know particular brands that I've heard things about what they've done and how they deliberately don't make bigger clothes because they don't want bigger women in their clothes. And it's like, right, so that one's off my list. No matter what size I ever am, never buying that, you know, and never going to recommend that to anyone because once you start this discrimination bullshit, because let's face it, it is. Yeah. They're discriminating on a, against women on the basis of what size their body is, you know, and it's, oh, it's so infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. Oh, uh, because look, I've seen a woman in a bigger body. I have seen my whole life. And so, you know, you grow up with this thing about, you know, oh, you'd look better if you lost some weight and, you know, you're not healthy if you don't lose weight and all these things. And it's like, well, you know, the, the healthy one is something that I, I would really love to just quickly mention because it's another way of body policing. Mm -hmm. Because I, I don't know from what you've experienced, but I've experienced talking to women who have been size eight, size 10, and they were in the midst of an eating disorder. They were in the midst of cancer treatment or some other life-changing illness. And people didn't care, suddenly didn't care about their health. And it was, oh, you look so good and this and this and this and that. And then when they got healthy and they got to a, their body stabilized at a healthy weight for them, whatever that may be later, they're like, oh, but you need to be careful about your health. Like, now I am healthy. <laughs> now I am eating like a normal person again. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, and things. isn't it like his, his, historically too, a healthy body was the one that had access to food and the ideal yes. that we're now revering in our culture of a skinny model size yeah. is unhealthy I mean it, it actually will stop menstruating and doing your you know baby, yes. baby depending on how slim baby, baby. Yes. yeah yeah yes. yeah and yes. and the thing is the other thing is there too is that women who are naturally slim mm. will also get body shamed mm. of why don't you eat a burger or you're so thin you're so frail this it's like can we just stop talking about mm. women's bodies or actually in anyone's body, not just women, men too. Let's just stop. Let's just absolutely stop talking about each other's body. There's no reason for you to comment on someone's body. I'm sorry. I just don't see a reason for it. You look well. You look healthy. You know, hey, how are you doing? Oh, gee, I like your lippy. You know, there's no reason we need to say, oh, geez, you look good. How much weight have you lost? Yeah, like, we're, we're learning, aren't we? And I love I think it's getting better. It's getting better. And there's so many wonderful women who are in social media who are now showing their bodies. And even that, even that. Maybe, you know, I share because, you know, this is something that you are really passionate about. Who are some of those role models that people who might want to start following a positive, hmm. a positive role model yeah. as opposed to you know, the, and I, I talk with women about this, you know, encouraging their feed to be filled with the things that yes. turn yes, them on absolutely. in a way of yeah. em, 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 um, embracing their um, body in a, a, a way that's supporting them instead of yes. filling it with people that just make them feel shit. So, oh, yeah, yes. have a couple that but you'd recommend. That the, the, the first one is um, Karen Brunfit, who is our Australian of the Year this year. So she did a fabulous documentary called Embrace. Oh, I love that. I think, it's, I think it's still up on Netflix, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Definitely. Still there. That is such an eye-opener about um, diet industry, what women think about their bodies. Like to watch that, I think it goes for like 90 minutes. It is well worth a watch. And her um, social media um, account too, she's now working heavily with young women, young young with kids so it's because we know that children as young as 80 years old are already being concerned about what their bodies look like and already starting to go on diets wow so yeah and so she's working heavily now with young kids 
because she's trying really trying to break the cycle of this shit. Um, so she's number one. Um, I love Lizzo, who is an Amer African American artist singer. Uh, Sydney L. Bell is another African American woman who dances and sings, and not sings, so she models now. And I can't think. There's a, Jane Crabb is another one. She's English. Um, we'll put these on the show it. notes and on yeah, my yeah, yeah, yeah. website. So if you and I, and I can give you some some other ones too. But what what I love about these women is that they're unapologetic about their bodies and what they look like. And if they want to wear a bikini, they're going to wear their bikini. Because there's this sort of, I, I came to this realisation a few weeks ago, and now I'm telling everyone, <laughs> that when you're a woman in a fat body, you're not allowed to show skin. You're not allowed to wear shorts. You're not allowed to wear tank tops. And heaven forbid you wear a bikini. Now, if you think about it, if you are on the beach and you are wearing a burkini, like, you know, the, the one that the Muslims lady wear with the hijab and long sleeves and right down to the bottom of their feet, or a swim dress or a bikini. If you have the same woman in each of those outfits, you can still tell she's fat. <laughs> it doesn't hide anything. We just can't see her skin or as much of her skin in some of them. Now, I'm not talking about being sun smart. That's a different issue. But I'm just talking about comfort and about what we're allowed to wear. And I don't know if, you, if you've noticed this, but if you look in summer when you're out and about in summer and you will see women who are still wearing jeans or long pants and everyone else around them is in shorts and skirts and it tends to be a woman who's a little bit on the bigger side and you're like, oh, I wonder if she's at the thing where she can't wear shorts. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's how sad. do we give women insight into supporting each other to, you know, change this dialogue and so we can feel I, I have I have something which may or may not be helpful or may not. So because I was thinking about this before I came on to talk to you today, Penn. And um for some people, this may be upsetting, and for other people, it may be a realisation. Mm -hmm. So no one is thinking about you as much as you do. Mm -hmm. So I know for some people, they will be like, mm, no one loves me. That's not, my, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what you mean. <laughs> what, what I mean is you are the one person who is constantly thinking about yourself. And that's, we're all doing that. Like that's not, I'm not, it's not a criticism of, that's just how we're made up, right? You are the person who are you going to talk to the most and you are the person whose voice you're going to hear the most. Mm -hmm. And once you start to realise that it's you who cares and not everyone else around you, it's liberating. Mm -hmm. Because I wore, I've, got to the point where I'm like I want to wear a fucking bikini I wanted to wear a bikini my entire life and I was like nothing too fat I can't do this blah, blah 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 and then I went I'm 40 I'm 40 I'm going to wear a goddamn bikini so you know what I bought one and I wore it and do you know what happened tell us nothing the sky didn't fall in <laughs> no one laughed at me Hell didn't know. I thought you were going to say I felt fabulous. Oh, yeah, I did. I did feel fabulous. But you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like this big event. Liz is wearing a bikini. You know, size 20 Liz is wearing a bikini. Oh, my God. We need to shame her. No. I wore it and I felt fucking amazing. And you know what? If someone had a problem with it, that was their problem, not mine. That's the biggest key, isn't it, for you women listening to know that we're all worried about looking good and, like you said, from our own perspective, that don't worry about what other people think of you because they're too busy worrying about what they think of themselves. Exactly. And that, yeah, that's so, it's so liberating when you can just get, like, it's not my problem what they think of me anyway. Exactly. They, exactly. they can love me or hate me regardless of how I show up in a bikini or not. So, yeah. And, and, that's, 
and I mean that goes through for just not just for your clothes oh. that's for anything for everything you know do what makes you happy I mean don't break laws you know don't hurt anyone else you know what I mean but work out what it is and and do try things try different things you know come try a choir class see if you like it do yoga if you've never done it before go on a hike somewhere you know try different things and see what is your thing because so I was at a party on the weekend and I'm trying to get away from talking to people only about their work and I said to two different people so what what turns you on what's your thing one was a woman and she went oh I don't really have a thing I have a dog and I have friends and I'm like your dog so we ended up talking about her dog <laughs> and you know she had this Labrador who's this crazy like Marley and me kind of dog so you know we had something different to talk about besides the work that she did and then I was talking to a to a man and I said it asked him the question and he looked at me and goes I don't know he had just recently come out of a long-term relationship which was abusive himself and had brought and he's like I'm trying to work it out for myself so there's lots of people who don't quite know where they fit and what they need to do. And so use it as not something that's sad. Try and turn it into something mm. positive, positive of I get to explore now. I get to play mm. and see what I can do. What do I like? Because if you've been in a long-term relationship or even like when we were talking about the kids growing up and whatever, and suddenly you've got this space and this time and you go, oh, what do I actually like to do? Mm, haven't had time for it. Let's work it out. So, Because I think this is this invitation in listening to this and our conversation is how do you light up your life in this period of life where we're told we shouldn't or we can't or we you know, don't fit in? So how do we do it? And your invitation to get curious and try things and find it like just because mm. you're in a particular way doesn't mean you can't shift it into some new exciting exactly exactly experience and do, some, do something outrageous try something you've never even thought about you know if you've got the money hell go skydiving see if you like it <laughs> well I think we should get them to your choir classes so well, tell us yeah, a bit about definitely Come how how do people listening who've never done it before, and even if you have, maybe you've never done it with Liz mm -hmm. and also, you know, forgotten, like we're all about remembering yeah. and every dance um, is different because you always have different themes and stuff. So mm -hmm. tell us how they get to experience you and your offerings and try it out. At the moment I'm teaching weekly in Thornbury, in Gisborne, St Kilda and Sunbury that's weekly in-person classes and I'm doing fortnightly on Zoom on the weekends um, when you go to my website which is sunrangersqueer.com.au sunrangers which Penny so, will put in the notes too yeah and when queer you, is Q-O-Y-A yes yes that's a so I, I'm just going to explain that quickly so queer has no U in it because it's not an English word it means queen but queen as an empowered woman in an ancient peruvian language yeah. so that's why sometimes i will refer to myself as a queer and i have i have my facebook group for my dancers or for the women who are following me and i've called that the um dancing queen sisterhood to fit in with this idea that we're all queens beautiful but um when you hop onto my website, when you sign up to my newsletter, you'll get a code so you can come and try your first class for free. So that's in-person classes and the Zoom classes, whatever works best for you. Um, and this is what I'm saying with try stuff out. Find where there's free stuff that you can try and see if you like it. It doesn't have so to cost you a lot of money. If you make a class or the times don't work, do you have any recordings on your website or something they can just taste it out with? I don't at the moment. I I forgot that YouTube is very strong on their licensing of music. So I, my playlists are normally I use Spotify music, so I use popular music. 
so what I'm going to have to do, and that's in the pipeline to do, is to record so classes with unlicensed music so I can have it up on YouTube. So that's that's the aim. So the goal was to have one class a month to go up this year. But because the music problem kind of <laughs> mucked me up a little bit, um, that hasn't happened yet. But um, it'll be something, if you sign up to my newsletter, you will see when that does happen. I will be publicising that I've done that. Or following me on, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I tried TikTok, that was not pretty. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm not a TikToker, I'm sorry, it just doesn't quite work for me. So you've got options, there's yeah, the social yeah. media and website, sunrangescoya.com.au and yeah, on the notes or on my website, pennyvandersloose.com, I'll have not only this recording and video format, but all the links and all those recommendations that you had yeah. for people to follow and um, watch um, the Embrace video and stuff like mm. that. So yeah. definitely some good resources there for you. So Liz, just to kind of complete what turns us on and, you know, how we can have body love and acceptance in our midlife so that we can be free and wild and sexy. <laughs> uh -huh. What's kind of a message you'd love to leave women listening today? Um, yeah, from like your experience, you just wish women in their midlife knew this one thing. I, I think it goes back to what I said before. I, I think what we all need to realise is that no one is thinking about you as much as you think about yourself. And once you get that concept and that you have that realisation in your mind, you get Absolutely. to the point where you go, you, you get to the point where you will go, I am the one who needs to, to be happy here and it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about what my, my choices are, what my options are and what I do and my actions. Again, I'm saying with reason that you're not committing crimes and those kinds of things, but, you know, you are in control of your life and whatever anyone else thinks about it they haven't been in your shoes they have not walked through your life you are you are the controller of it and honey take the bull by the horns and just go with it yeah baby <laughs> <laughs> i'm so grateful liz for your time and your passion and friendship and all the um you're seriously a Koya queen. You are out there promoting it and, um, you know, hope that people listening will give it a go. It's incredible. It's such a beautiful practice. You can try it once or like Liz has many people regularly at her classes. It can be, you know, a different way of um, connecting with yourself weekly and regularly. So thank you. Thank you, Penny. Thank you so much for having me, for inviting me on. It's been well, lovely. Connect soon.